Why are you wearing a Dodge? Oh, it's the Langer's jersey shirt. With your yeah, I pair, I pair that with my L.A. hat. Yeah. Right? Ugh, you're wearing red, white, and blue, and I'm wearing red and white. Ugh. Look at that. Like twinsies, huh? Like oh, that. no. This, uh, How did this happen? It's starting to converge, you know. <laughs> we shall become one. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Never in my life do I wish that for anyone. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Mai Chow. And thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing all right. Mai Chow, another day, another, I don't know, verbal dump fire diarrhea sort of. Sorry. Bonjour. I don't know. <laughs> what? Yeah, kind of a, that's a way to start, don't you think? Yeah, I've proven the point, I suppose. Well, here we are once again. How are you? I'm fine, I guess. I had a dental appointment. Got my crown, finally, permanent crown. So that's good. For anyone out there, don't do an HMO for dental. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it was bugging me before Japan, right? So I had, I ended up getting, a, I, I had to get a root canal the week before we flew out. Is so, that right? I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. So I had no, they just filled it. So I didn't get my the temporary crown until after it came back. And then I just got the permanent crown now, but. I was worried I was going to break my tooth in Japan. So I kept, from the beginning, I was always chewing on one side. Oh, really? Okay. So you, yeah. you still tried to eat everything, eat through Japan, oh, but yeah. just... Uh, That's not going to stop me. Just what? on one side. Yeah. No, I guess not. No. Okay. Well, glad you got that done. Was that uh, was that painful? Painless? I don't know. How did it work out? It was the permanent crown, so it was fine. But a couple of weeks ago was the temp crown, and that was painful. Well, that wasn't painful. It was just, I guess, sore after. Because I had to like saw into my teeth to get rid of it. So yeah, it doesn't sound fun. Have you never had a root canal? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think I've yeah. been pretty fortunate so far. Yeah, um, I had lucky. a maybe had like maybe a small filling here mm -hmm. or something, but nothing, nothing really major like that yet. Okay. Oh, good. Hopefully it stays that way. Because root canals yeah. don't. They don't hurt. They hurt before, I suppose, before because it's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's just you're sitting there waiting while they're drilling into your mouth for doing who knows what. You don't feel anything. Right. It's just, you got that anesthetic on there, right? Of dread. Yeah. So uh, how long did the procedure take you? Uh, the root canal itself is like an hour, hour and a half. Okay. I was waiting for an hour and a half before they even got to me, which is the worst part. So you have to so. wait, and then you still do the procedure, and then, yeah. you know, yeah. So yeah. did you have to... Uh, give you anything after the fact, you know? Yeah, I was taking pills while I was in Japan, actually. Um, the uh, second uh, amoxicillin, mm -hmm. so uh, an antibiotic for a week, uh, three pills a day for seven days, and they also gave me the ibuprofen, the big ibuprofen that's prescription strength, which is great. Mm. I didn't use much of it, so I still have a bunch. Well, good. Uh, not even a root canal can stop uh, my child from. Uh conquering japan and elsewhere all of so. japan yes <laughs> <laughs> the two cities i've been to was all of japan yes yeah creating his own dynasty and empire right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i will say like when we went to the Oli and i went to the conveyor belt sushi uh, when we were there mm -hmm. we had the highest stack of plates people were more chill when they're eating <laughs> we had like we were just stacking them like no, no, no i'm here for the cheap sushi let's go that's right. Cause, oh, because that reminds me, I went to Kura last week because uh, a friend mm -hmm. of mine wanted to get the current collab prizes. So you, you do 15, 15 plates to get a gotcha prize. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, $3.70 a plate now, which is crazy to me. It used to be one fifty. Yeah, it's pretty high. I, due to uh, inflation. Exactly. Due to inflation. And we'll get to that in a sec. But yeah. yes, due to inflation. Um, but the smart thing now, though, they sell... The, you can just order the, the gotcha prize you want for the price of a plate. Oh, um, so you don't need to go through the whole. We didn't know that until we already got the first gotcha. So we did our 15 and we just bounced because like, ah, I'm the 370 a plate for this. Eh, yeah. I don't know. 
Well, that I feel like that's the equivalent of what you'd want to do at like Chuck E. Cheese. Is like I don't need to play all the games. I just want to buy the prize. Can I buy the prize? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And thankfully, they give that option. Okay. So. All right. So as long as you got you know the prize that you wanted, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, it does remind me. I have to. You have to remind me um, offline. The um, I, I read this article about this uh, revolving sushi uh, restaurant in I think in Gardena. You know, down in the South Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, maybe you'd have to visit and to try it out. So, um, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I got to bring John cause you know, he's all about, well, he's over that, right? He's over his, uh, aversion to sushi here in the States. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, well, oh, yeah. you know, Japan will, will do a lot of things to you. That's for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And he's going again this year, so he might not want to do sushi again for a while. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't, yeah, so maybe just for us, uh, plebs, I suppose, or just me. I think I'm the only one really from this group who has not been to Japan. So, um, change that. Yeah, one day Each we'll get trip. there. Yeah, we'll get there. But for now, I'll just eat all, uh, the sushi and ramen that's out here for now. That, all of LA, yes. Yeah, we'll conquer LA. One man shortage for, or one man cause for the shortage <laughs> of fish in the Los Angeles area. Single handedly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, Maicha, it was uh, pretty neat uh, seeing each other recently. Um, you know, we we did uh, probably the unthinkable or the unspeakable or the improbable or something. But uh, it it was really we did the mixing of, of the friend groups. Yeah, I can't believe you've destroyed my one rule. Yeah, I have no respect for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that's, no that's fair. I consideration. Know, I <laughs> just like I have this one request. It's like <laughs> no, it's like you did for my friend groups. Not yours. It's like you did the one thing I asked you specifically not to do. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. Things. No, I don't mix friend groups at all. Okay. Or I try not to as much as possible. You, on the other hand, just I have, you know, meet everybody. It's fine, y'all. Right. Crazy. Just all kind of mix in there, so yeah. How how could you do this? I don't know, but here we are. But uh, in this case, we uh, we mix the old, e old friend group with uh, with a Team XDR. And that's again the label that we're sticking with and we're going with. Yeah, we'll um, see if that catches. <laughs> um, but we had a, I think, a pretty good meetup. We were down here uh, out in uh, Long Beach. And uh, we tried out some, we all tried out some food at a place that none of us had been before um, with a cuisine that I don't think many of us had had. Um, but uh, we visited a restaurant called Crystal Thai Cambodian uh, restaurant. It's down in Long Beach. It's in that kind of um, enclave of, uh, of little Cam- Cambodia. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, it's just, uh, it's a food, I think a cuisine that is just, still not as well known or just not as thought about i think when we think about asian cuisine you know our go-to's of course chinese japanese uh korean uh Mm -hmm. thai vietnamese right um but not much in the way of cambodian khmer uh food so um which is interesting because one of our friends is cambodian and uh, why, does that, why does it have to be the qualifier? <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> it's like the Helen Rays when you when you met that random. Uh, well, I thought, you know, party. they, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, uh, Lost Brothers or something. You know, you want them to connect, you know, and reunite or something. That That's what I was yeah. thinking. Is that racism? No, it's Kindred Spirits. Okay. Khmer. Yeah, Khmer spirits. Okay. Yeah, see. All right, sure, sure. I'm just trying to bring everyone together here, you know. You know that's admirable. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah, here we are. That's good. <laughs> um, but yes, as we as we continue with uh, this Khmer food, the Cambodian cuisine, um. We we had quite a, a good meal. Let me um it's a it's a local spot. It's you know neighborhood, I think just a, a favorite for those yeah. that are in the neighborhood. And um Without it's not known, it was a restaurant just exactly by. just a very, you know, one of your hole in the walls, you know, going inside even. It's not a very big spot. You got a few booths, you got you know, we were lucky, I think, uh, to have just a table that was 
exactly meant for, you know, the group of us, there's like eight of us. And, um, we were able to, to kind of get that and sit down. And thankfully we did because shortly after a lot more people started rolling in and filling up that space. Um, how many you think would, would, would have been in there? Um, not many. Yeah. I mean, let's say a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Like a couple dozen or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So it, it is a small space, but they make some mighty fine, some mighty fine food. So, uh, you know, we made, made a game plan, you know, about the things to order. So I'll just kind of run through these here. We got some, um, got some beef skewers. Uh, we got this lot cha, which is a, a stir fry noodle with some, you know, some sauce on there. Uh, we got the uh, the water spinach to Carmen's request. That was a last minute addition. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, it would have just gone. No, not, the no shame, no regrets, no remorse. Like the, absolutely no not. I just I just finished it uh, today. You know, I took the rest home. Ah, okay. So uh, that's one of the few things that was still left over. So I mean, not surprisingly, <laughs> exactly. Um, in the way of other vegetables, we did have some eggplant, but I did make sure to add some beef on there, which I think really took it over the top. Very um, papaya salad, um, which, which I, I don't remember salad. was, um, did someone, uh, get thrown off with the papaya salad? There's like something, uh, in the way of the spice level or something like that. Was, was there, I mean, it was, uh, I was completely surprised by how spicy a salad could be, but, uh, it took me by surprise. There was also, I don't know. I think that was really the big thing. There's a little crab, cl- a little claw in it i forgot what it was oh was there claw maybe mm-hmm. yeah and there are a couple of little tiny claws oh interesting okay i didn't i didn't catch that um but good to know now i'm gonna butcher this name this is a soup a salmore machu uh this was a kind of a sour based uh soup with uh things like there's various meats in there beef we had intestine you know we had all right. kind of the, yeah, yeah. Good. um yeah and various vegetables as well so um, that is a national dish. I think one of the more signature dishes of uh, yeah. Cambodians. So I'm glad we got that. I uh, also got the lok lak, which is a stir fried beef dish. Mm-hmm. Um, the fried catfish, which, um, I think took well to everyone once we it's started digging into it. Um, yeah. I got to thank, uh, got to thank team XDR for, for deconstructing that for us because, uh, well, it's kind one of a, person specifically, okay. but <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think once we dug into it, it was, uh, it was quite it was good. Work. It was great and nice and crispy on the outside. Yeah. Great flavor oh, yeah. of that fish. Um, and then that sauce. I, I don't, I haven't looked up what it was, but it reminds me of like, a, you know, the Vietnamese have the, the nook nam, which is like the fish sauce. You know, it's kind of a, mm. it's got that savory sweetness to it, but this is definitely a thicker, you know, version of it. Um, I don't know if that's correct. If anyone uh, wants to, uh, to follow up, uh, with me on that email us at hi at dumb and hungry dot com um and no one will so uh we also got some sweet and sour ribs uh i will note that both that and the salmon machu share an ingredient of uh, pineapple in there so mm-hmm. um but the sweet and sour rib is uh, it's a saucy dish um but, it was yes. yeah but uh little nice bite-sized pieces of uh, a ribbon there. Now mm-hmm. we had, there were two other uh, dishes in mind, you know, to get, but um, there are two things that happened. One, the, uh, you know, our host just straight up said, uh, that's too much food. Just <laughs> yes, actually, actually before the sweet and sour, they, they cut us off, cut us off before I, I ordered the sweet and sour ribs. They already cut us off before that. It's too much food. Um, and uh, I was going to ask for one more dish, right? I'd ask for one more. Originally, it was going to be this ban chow, um, mm-hmm. or ban chev, as they have it here, which is this, like, thin crepe dish, um, you know. Uh, but they said that they they wouldn't have it available, I, I think. Or they said they were too busy to make it, take too, you know, much to prepare. I think they were just saying, we don't want to do it, okay? You order too much. Um, yeah, I don't blame them. How dare you? You know, exactly. So, but they did accommodate our sweet and sour rib request. So I was I was grateful about that. And then uh, one other item we had in mind we did not get was the chakrung, uh, which is a uh, good question. I'm not sure. But uh, I think that's the one with the yes. um, the kind of the, there. you can choose a, a meat, you know. I was going to get chicken, <laughs> but it's like fried with like, 
long bean or something. I think that's the oh, one. Oh, okay. Um, but mm-hmm. we didn't get that either. So, and then uh, there were various beverages that they had uh, yeah. that, you know, different people ordered. Um, remind me what those kind of more specialty uh, drinks were. I mean, it was just, okay, Thai tea, right? Okay. Uh, and there's also an iced coffee, normal stuff. But uh, the majority of the table got the egg soda. Egg soda. Okay. So, which I don't, I didn't have it, unfortunately. I, I didn't even get, to, I didn't try it. I should have. But uh, it's supposed to be like egg yolk with club soda and condensed milk, I think is what they said mm. it was supposed to be. And I heard it was good. It was very well received. Okay, good. I, I also did not get to try it. Um, but, if I heard it was good, it yeah, it looks like it's uh, more of a Vietnamese uh, recipe. Oh, okay. You know, so um, yeah, as you said, egg yolk, condensed milk. So here's a silly question: Is it raw egg? It's raw egg. That's what we were talking about, right? Like I wasn't be. sure yeah, if we it was because I, I, it should be right. How would it? I don't know. I don't know. Can you think like a poached egg yolk? Yeah, just a very lightly, like very quickly cooked, like egg yolk like you know it hasn't hasn't anything to actually scramble it or anything but just enough to mm-hmm. to bring that temp up to potentially you know take care of any any uh foreign you know adversaries in the yolk i don't know oh, i don't know <laughs> how things work okay i just eat the stuff consume them um but yeah, lots so of question okay <laughs> it's trying to be a little just, just- Put it in Edu- your mouth and swallow. <laughs> That's what we do. It's words to live by. I tell you. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I think those who had it uh, enjoyed it more they or less. Like yeah. So yeah. and they didn't die, as far as we know. Exactly. That's uh, the more important. At least not right away. So I wouldn't be liable. Um, <laughs> good. But that was quite the menu. And and you know, there's eight of us and kind of two square size tables put together yeah. and you know we had all these dishes that just started coming out you know one after the other yeah. um and yeah i think you know it really really put a challenge to kind of move everything around pass the dishes around but mm-hmm. uh it was it was a good time well spent i mean like it was a good meal you know yeah definitely was there anything we, she stand- said it was too much food but we put a good dent in it technically we we could have finished it if we really wanted to. I mean, we really did finish. I mean, the only thing we didn't finish was the water Vegetables. spinach and <laughs> yeah. the and the rice, you know. Yeah. But exactly. but I think so, we finished everything else. All right? the proteins. Oh yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. We demolished so, everything. So remember, they have so. that. That was our first visit. So they have not vi- You know, they haven't met the likes of us. <laughs> so. was, oh my but I, you know, again, for eight people, I mean, that's um, that that yeah, was considerable good. considerable amount. So glad um i was gonna ask was there anything stand out for you from uh, uh, honestly i like i really like that sour soup mm. um my sister's boyfriend is cambodian oh yeah and that's like his uh whatever like because the closest thing we have in, in filipino food is synagogue yes yeah, so whenever my parents make it he he eats a lot of it because it reminds him of that same sour uh, soup. Yes. It, it, yeah. i understand why it's good right like, now hey has he met uh, Kanara, <laughs> no. <laughs> Let let's make that happen. <laughs> I think we're good. You, I still you have you don't have the aversion I do for. See for now groups. now that you've mentioned it, now it's going to be in my mind, and we're going to work towards <laughs> like day, this yeah. this yeah this union. Long term so. goals. Oh man. So this uh, yeah. So hey, if you're down there, or if you want to try, I mean, Long Beach, Little Cambodia is you know how is the home of uh, the largest Cambodian population, you know, outside of Cambodia. So um, mm. makes sense that you have a great variety of that cuisine over there. And it's just really underrated. I think um, it's it would be unfair to say that um, Cambodian food is just an offshoot or just, you know, some, I think like a mild version of like Thai food. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously being in the general region, you'd have overlap of ingredients and even technique and things like that. But, you know, the food and the product, um, you know, is still their own. It's still, mm-hmm. you know, unique to them. I mean, you know, they go out of their way to call themselves crystal Thai Cambodian, you know, restaurant. So, you know, there's got to be a distinction, you imagine, right? So, yeah. Um, 
but yes, that was uh, that was quite good. And let me also tell you that um, you know inflation is rampant. Uh, you know these days, apparently, Actually, particularly at this restaurant. <laughs> 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 um, as as we walked in, there was uh, you know, well, here's the thing. Before I was doing some research, right, and putting together this game plan, and uh, I was you know putting together what to order. And, you know, you look at places like Yelp or, you know, wherever they post menu picks online. Um, but, you know, the odd thing is that it was the menu picks, you know, didn't have any prices on there. I don't know if you took a look. I mean, you know, uh, more of the recent, you know, picks didn't have any prices. Some of the older ones did, but, you know, that oh, really? was very old and, again, inflation. So, um and then, you know, I was kind of confused. So I just put together the list and just hope for the best. And, you know, I tried to try to gauge in my mind, I guess, an estimate of what dishes like these could cost. But, um, you know, I uh, could only do so much, I guess. But as we walked inside, there was uh, a couple of just uh, signs, if you could call printed them signs. signs Basically yeah. just like, yeah. yeah signs, yeah. Printed, just printed pieces of paper, right? Printed text, yeah. Printed <laughs> <laughs> text point seventy two font, and it says here: due to inflation, menu prices are not shown. If you have questions, please ask. And then in all caps, thank you. It's <laughs> and actually, thank you. You know, although it's all all caps, it's emphasis, right? But it ends in yeah. a period, so <laughs> I think it like evens it out or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> but it's it's quite uh, inflation will do that to you. So, um, yeah. uh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. So, how much? And the the point is the the reason this matters is because it's cash only, so you can't use your card. So That's you right. need to have make sure you have enough. And exactly. What happened there? Yeah. So, um, I'm telling you right now, um, dinner came up to about, I think, thirty five a person. Okay. So, um, it was, I think it was reasonable. Um, you know, that's you know inclusive tax and tip and all that. You know. Yeah. That's not so bad. I think for. I don't know. I feel like for the the amount of food that we had, that was uh, about nine dishes. You know, and all the drinks and all that, right? Um, I think that yeah. was a reasonable um, ask. But but then again, how would you know? You just go up there and say, "Can I pay?" And then they just give you a number. They just yeah, tell you, you the number to pay, and then you just okay. I guess that's yeah. what it is. You know, <laughs> but, what's an itemized receipt? Uh, exactly right. Those uh, those are non-existent here. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, once again, that's um, Crystal Thai Cambodian restaurant in uh, in Long Beach. So uh, good times had by all. Thank you to the old friend group and Team XDR for uh, for a good time there. Yeah, um, it's good, but it wasn't it. That wasn't everything. No, you're right. Actually, we uh, <laughs> okay. Jesus. You're right. We can never, uh, we never can just stop there. I mean, actually, who was it? Uh, one of them asked, um, Hey, uh, I, I forget how it was phrased, but where are we going after this? It's basically the follow-up question, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's where else are we going? Question. You know? So, um, we didn't necessarily do like a bang bang or whatever, but, uh, although we, almost it, went in out. <laughs> we could have, yes, we potentially could have, oh, but, God. uh, Except unfortunately we were no. outnumbered, you yeah. know, um, Look, that's how this all started. This whole bang bang thing is a joke. Okay, anytime I said where we're going next, it was always a joke. Mm. And yet we ended up going somewhere after anyway. Like, yeah, I mean, way we, back. We, I think in this case we do take we do take these uh, requests seriously. You know, <sighs> doesn't always have to be. <laughs> but in this case, we did follow up with some sweet treats. Um, on, dessert. On... dessert does count. It's always mm -hmm. room, always room for dessert. So in um in uh long beach or particularly actually specifically the uh, city of lakewood incorporated in that area but um is uh a shopping center and complex called the long beach exchange and we've mentioned it a couple times mm -hmm. you are you're, you've been somewhat familiar with it but i think this was your first time to you know actually visit out really, there yeah but um uh so at the Long Beach Exchange, you got various shops, various restaurants and things, but then you also have a specific food court style building called mm -hmm. the, the Long Beach Hangar. And so that has a handful of um, other food type, you know, restaurants and stuff, fast casual eats mm -hmm. and whatnot. 
Um, yeah, I, I'm curious, do you have, how would you explain, you know, well, how would you explain your experience at that area, you know, and what you saw and, uh, you know, went through there? I don't know. I honestly, I was in there for the bathroom. Um, but the croft was like the only one that I knew from there. Mm -hmm. It was the croft because we had the croft to the yeah. one in Chinatown previously. Uh, so that was cool. Just nice to see. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it looked interesting. There were some, I forgot what, what it was, but it's something I would try. Uh, it was in the corner, like when you on the left side when you enter the corner in the back. I, f I remember for some reason that one stuck out to me, but I have no idea why. Okay, well, if anyone's out there, I don't know. Well, next time you're down you here, you don't know. We'll, How dare you? I don't know offhand. Um, I don't keep That's track sometimes. Disappointed. Um, but if you uh, do come down again, uh, we'll go out there and we'll pay a visit. Yeah. Um, but particularly what we were focused on was uh, not at the hangar, but just at the exchange itself was uh, this ice cream shop called Handles. So it's kind of a local chain. Uh, there are a few locations uh, scattered throughout, but the one out here in, in Long Beach. Um, and I don't know. I there was there's a line, you know, it seems pretty mm -hmm. popular, you know. Yeah, I'm um, very surprised by that line, honestly. But uh, they got a lot of flavors and just a lot of different ways to prepare them. But um what what did you get out there? So I ended up getting just a, it was just a, cu a cup, a uh, waffle cup bowl thing, mm -hmm. dipped in dipped in chocolate and peanuts. Yeah, with two flavors of the Faust in a house, which is like a Reese's peanut butter cup thing, um, and the strawberry cheesecake chunk because cheesecake, um, and it was good. I would definitely get it again. Okay, good. And uh, what yeah. did Oli get? I, I kind of remember it was looked a bit more. Split. Yeah. Yeah, but it's split with three flavors of black cherry. And I don't remember the other two. Mm, okay. But it was good. Now, does she like banana splits typically? Is that her yeah. go-to? Oh, or? yeah. That's her. Yeah, like a, even a fossil mince, she'd get, a, get one of those. Okay. So anywhere that offers it, it's usually her, what she gets. Okay, nice. Um, what did I get? I got a, um, I don't know. I think I got a medium. Did you get a four scoop sample? Oh, no, okay. I didn't. I just, I think I just got a medium, which came with two flavors. Uh, I think it was a pecan praline and like a peanut butter brownie flavor. So, um, both a, of, just a bowl in a, no waffle, anything. No, no. Okay. So just, uh, just a cup, just a standard run of the mill kind of deal. Yeah, okay. but yeah, as as you mentioned, you know, you could get a four scoop sampler so you can try out um, different flavors. So yeah, which is cool. But it's uh, a flight, basically. It's a flight, exactly. Well, it makes sense. We're near uh, the hangar. You know? A hangar, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know why they didn't call it a flight. <laughs> um, well. I, I'm glad uh, we got to try it, uh, and I think yeah, it sounds it like something that we would really uh, we would go back again. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really sure what to say. I mean, the ice cream itself was um, the flavors. I think that everyone had were were enjoyed. It was a good texture of ice cream, nice and creamy. Um, I mean, you know, nothing really you can complain or you know or ask more of really for just yeah. some good ice cream. Yeah, and I was told they're opening up a uh, one in Los Feliz. Area. Okay, well, there you go. See, for you, uh, I, yeah, so closer to home for me, but I'm excited, but it depends on where it is, I suppose. I think it'd be where uh, Connell's fine ice cream was. Oh, interesting, yeah, that's right, that's a good point. Um, but we'll, well, I guess we'll find out when we, uh, when the time comes. So, yeah, hey, speaking of food, you know, let's continue talking yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what we do. It's what we do. So thank you uh, really to our listeners and viewers and everywhere. Really our few and only fans. Uh, thank you for joining us as we continue to talk about our food adventures. You know, these local spots, pop-ups, you know, everything in between. Good food, good people. Um, you know, we are really on this, uh, really I'm on this uh, kind of kick here to catch up on you know, a lot of these places, a lot of places that I've uh, visited recently and um, wanted to kind of share about to see if you'd be interested to try as well, you know, at your leisure. 
Um, you know, we went through a lot of, um, we went through a lot of spots. Um, last time we talked about a lot of restaurants, whether in San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley, uh, mm -hmm. kind of the central Los Angeles area. Yeah. Even to the West side, you know, um, there's, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of places that we covered. I was, um, we didn't really specifically say, uh, last time, but I was counting here, including some of the after show bits. Uh, we hit about 40 places, you know, to try. Eesh. So that's, that's plenty to, to keep yeah. busy. So, um, from all sorts of foods, you know, uh, Bur you know the important food groups you know burgers uh, barbecue, barbecue yeah. um tacos. Got tacos you know um asian what flair other and foundational food group um there's many i mean there's too many to count i mean ice cream uh, is, is a foundational is. um food group as well i think yeah oh yeah um and so i think we'll continue with that so you know um so let me just kind of run down again basically what this is not, um, <laughs> this is, this is not a like top list. This is not like a top 10 top, whatever list. This is not a ranked list. This is again, not an ordered list as far as like uh, preference of, you know, um, worst to best. Uh, this is not a review list. You know, I may talk about some things more than others. Um, probably because they're just more fresh in mind or just more memorable. I don't know, maybe, mm -hmm. but, uh, generally these are places that I enjoyed, you know, visiting. Um, but I don't think I really left out anyone. Um, so everything's pretty all inclusive, uh, from as far as I'm concerned, there's obviously places in these areas that people, um, would think, Oh, why didn't you visit this place or this place? You know, and may, I may have visited those places before, you know, in another visit, but I'm just kind of talking about a, a particular window of time. Um, and so that's what these places are. So the only really sort of ordering or yeah, kind of order there is, is just by area, you know? So, um, we've kind of looked at the major regions of, you know, uh, the LA area, LA County, um, but, uh, again, these are in no particular like ranked order or anything. We'll, uh, we'll get started here. So we're going to start off in, um, going to move now to the, the South Bay area. Um, and again, these, uh, these regions generally, I think generally most people who are from LA are more familiar will be, you know, again, be familiar with these general regions, but, uh, we'll throw down, um, where we kind of defined these areas from. We didn't just make them up. Maybe some I did. I don't know. Or I just don't, I have poor memory remembering what they are. Yeah. But um, let's just start off here in um, actually the city of Inglewood. In my mind, actually, Inglewood, I don't know. I feel like Inglewood is its own thing. You know, um, I don't always uh, associate it with South Bay. I, I always find a hard time to kind of group it. Is it South Bay? Is it West Side? You know, is it, you know, more South? You know, but. Um, again, according to, uh, these regions defined, uh, it's part of the South Bay. So, um, we'll throw it in there, but if you have any thoughts, okay, see, exactly. So if you don't <laughs> believe me or, uh, the County Supervisors of Los Angeles, please email us at hi at dumb and Uh, let's, uh, let's kick it off here at this uh, spot. Now, Inglewood is home to uh, a lot of great, actually, soul restaurant, soul food, Jamaican, Caribbean, and there are plenty of those, plenty of visited and plenty to talk about. But um, we got to start off with, uh, again, a foundational food group, um, and that is burgers. So this spot I've seen, I've probably seen on TikTok, maybe on YouTube, on the socials for sure. It's, just, it's a restaurant called a Storm Burger. And it's just, uh, their goal is just to make a simple product, just a, a classic burger, you know, uh, that you get like from a, a classic burger stand. So you can see here, this is, um, it's, it's cooked like a, towards like a smash type burger. It's, you know, thin patties. Um, but you can see how it's built. It's built like a, like kind of a, a road, a burger stand type, uh, kind of deal. You know, you have, it's thick on the, on the veg, you got the tomato, onion, uh, lettuce, and then the bun is kind of a, a thicker bun, not quite brioche, but you know, it's not quite your super soft white plushy bun, 
you know. So biting into it, it's got a little bit of heft, you know, um, but it actually, it's not too, uh, doesn't throw it off. You know, there's not an overpowering uh, ratio or whatever of uh, the meat to the rest of the ingredients. I think it works well for like a burger stand type burger. Um, so that's, that's Stormberry. That's a thing to, to try out there. So moving on. Uh, okay. The next, <laughs> the next uh, restaurant I actually wanted to highlight is uh, also in Inglewood. And I'm not exactly sure of the name of the restaurant itself. I mean, only because you just see it, you know, printed, but I don't really know the pronunciation. Oh, um, I see. I'll pronounce it as two homies. Okay. So that's spelled uh, H-O-M-M-E-S. And that E has an accent there. An accent mark because it's that's French. Right. Yeah. Homies. Isn't it just... Two ohms. Ohms. Ohmies. But yeah. if, if there's men. the accent, would it not uh, oh, require nice. to uh, the pr- explicit pronunciation? I don't know. If you know French, please email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com. Um, so what we have here, I I can't remember when exactly this was. I think I was just, it was just a casual day. It was coming from that general area. Um, and then... I just remember this place, uh, you know, just coming across this place and uh, wanting to try it. So there was another restaurant here. I remember it was like a wing spot. And I think those same owners basically made it this current spot now. But I may be wrong, but uh, I think that's what it was. So we have a plate here. We have jollof rice um, and some fried plantains. We have a, um, a very flavorful bean dip a black bean, uh, as well. And what you don't quite see, you have some microgreens on top of the jollof rice, but what's kind of hidden under there is a root beer braised short rib. So the, the plate itself, you know, the plate without the protein, um, I think it's like 20 something, I think it's like 25 something. Uh, and then you add the protein on there, which is another actually like 20 bucks or something. So it, it comes to a pretty, uh, pricey meal, but um, I will say it is dishes that are kind of elevated. They are prepared a little more thoughtfully. There's definitely more, yeah, thought in the preparation. Um, and I think it makes for a great meal. So even though it is a little bit pricier, but again, you're getting some like short ribs. So, you know, I think it kind of warrants the price here, but, but that's um, a two home, two homies in, uh, in Inglewood. If, if I, you know, if we follow up with that and get some proper Not French pronunciation, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have to go and, and maybe ask what, what's going on there. So Yeah, you should, and tell them how you pronounce it. I'm very, very curious how they react to this. Okay. Uh, next up, um, so we're going to travel to the city of Hawthorne, and there are a few places there, one of which um, is from a, a familiar, comes from a familiar uh, f- friend, um, Mr. Uh, Mark Tripp. So that is oh. at uh, Trip Burgers out in um, LA Aleworks. At Aleworks, yes. Oh, so, wow. nice. you know, Mark uh, and Trip Burgers, you know, you could count them either West Side or South Bay, but um, we were, I was visiting them with Team XCR. We were out there. Um, TFTI? I know. But then, you know, it's you know hard I to. I love Trip Burgers the it, most. It's hard to get out there, you know? I dare you. Okay. Well, I owe you. Trip yeah, burger. Yeah, I, yeah. I owe you four stack. So <laughs> oh, let's go. Mm-hmm. But um, as always, you know, Mark is uh, always very uh, friendly and and uh, hospitable and everything, and uh, makes some uh, some of LA's greatest uh, smash burgers. In its great in its simplicity, great in its flavor. Um, yeah. What is this? Onions, pickles? What's wrong with you? That's <laughs> it. I mean, what? I mean, that's all. As long as there's no ketchup on there, I think uh, I think need we're none safe. Of that. Uh, yeah, you're right. Meat. You if you could just have a plain meat I think, and cheese. Um, I think that's flying all. Dutchman version. I think we should. I think uh, I think they would uh, be amenable to that. Oh, well, um, I, I... but uh, in addition to uh, Mark, I also want to shout out to uh, to Jordan, um, who's uh, who works there at Ale Works and had helped. Uh, we had met um, as he when he was helping Mark out and uh, his pop ups early on. And, um, but now he's uh, focusing his time at, uh, at Aleworks. And so I just want to 
shout out that shout out to him and thank him for uh, always being real kind and uh just always uh being good to us so um but yeah whenever you're out there um you know get a good brew and hopefully uh trip is out there too but if you uh if you miss him at aleworks he'll be popping up at various places um in south bay or west side or sometimes even in downtown if you can catch him so um that's trip burgers out there uh so next couple of places um also in hawthorne one is a place we've talked about it's called pick your plate it's a um a filipino restaurant it's just like a local spot again like a neighborhood local spot you know it's not um not very like uh, well known i think to the out you know those outside but for those who do know i think they really like them and uh really you have a lot of regulars you know they have their mm. that come back so you know this is you know my child you're familiar with like the point point joints you know mm. uh your cafeteria style you know um uh kind of places where you have this um i don't know how do you describe it you know you have this uh glass pane that shows you all the different um you know dishes that they have available for that day you just kind of point to which dishes you want and and then they'll kind of serve them out there on a plate and then you're good to go right so they've got staples like adobo and sisig um, but they also have a lot of rotating flavors you know some that come to mind are beagle express uh or a chicken curry sometimes they have things like even uh uh, pasta or uh, gumbo I think we had mentioned at one point um, so you know they keep things a little uh, interesting with some variety uh, weekly they offer um, I think uh, they offer lechon I can tell you that like I said bu lechon um, so you know that those are the days to really you, know, you want to check them out but the you know the owners the the family there just everyone who works there is um, also very kind very uh, hospitable always um always welcoming and uh i think i've said that we've kind of gone there or i've gone there quite often with you know some uh some other people i work with and um we've been there pretty regularly that you know they kind of know each other know each other by name um and always um always excited to see each other so that's uh that's pick your plate i'm sure you know um in whatever neighborhood you're at uh or you know you'll find a new you'll find a spot like that um and it's always nice to know that you know there are people that care about uh the community and you know um always want to help the community and serve them through through good food so yeah uh, pick your plate is one of those places um and then as well also mentioned another spot called Zacatecas, which is a uh, you know a mexican restaurant also out in hawthorne and the thing to try there would be uh, we had a I remember having a carne asada plate, and um, the portions are pretty generous. The carne asada I think just really stood out. Um, whenever I visited there, it was just like you know a thin strip of uh, you know of, uh, carne asada, but it was very well seasoned. It was nice and tender, mm -hmm. and then you know you just it's loaded with you know the side of rice and beans and a little pico and uh, just the whole dish you know as a whole was just um, very. Uh, very enjoyable so i'm glad that uh turned out very well uh now there are two sacatecas out there um i forget um so this one is called sacatecas and then there's another restaurant called sacatecas i forget a similar name but we'll throw down the correct location um of where uh where what i'm talking about was so yeah but um now on um, from Hawthorne, now we're going into the city of Torrance. Now, Torrance is, you know, probably one of the big cities that you think of when you think of the South Bay. It's pretty, um, pretty suburban, you know, very, uh, you know, it's a very safe area where you want to maybe settle down or, you know, just, uh, just have a pretty good time, um, without too much fuss out there. But, uh, one spot that, uh, wanted to highlight was, um, from our friend Alec, who runs the pop-up uh, AGL. And um, I had seen him mm. uh, out there when he was uh, at this brewery, Smog City. And actually, he's back in L.A. after visiting New York and staying in New York for a little bit, trying to, um, I think, just kind of learn new things, kind of improve his uh, his skill set and everything. So 
Um, he's back from that and I think he's back better than ever. So, uh, nice. we have a, you know, a barbecue plate here, which of course, um, is such a very important food group. So we have some brisket, some ribs, um, potato salad, uh, mac and cheese. And, you know, that first bite, even after, um, you know, being him being gone for that long, just it's, it was all very familiar, all very good. Um, that brisket was, you know, came with good, uh, with a good texture, good flavor. And, um, I mean, you know, nothing you can really complain about. And then on days when he serves up the pastrami, that's the day that you also want to visit. That's, he's got Mm -hmm. some really good pastrami that you got to try. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, AGL. Um, so again, just like a lot of these pop-ups, you want to follow them on, on social just to make sure that, um, you're finding them at the right places and, um, yeah, getting the right, getting the good stuff there. So, um, now also in Torrance, um, technically this spot, uh, is really, a an Inglewood spot. Um, this spot is called sweet red peach. Um, but there I'm listing them down in Torrance because I had visited them down at the Del Amo mall, which is one of their more recent locations. So I think recently in the last, you know, couple of years, they've been, starting to branch out and uh, expand to locations. So this is one of their more recent locations. And um, what you want to get here, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for, you know, good desserts, good baked goods. Um, and in this case, uh, they have a great red velvet cake. So um, my child, I mean, we know that red velvet is basically just red chocolate, I guess. Yeah. But um with, uh, with good cream cheese uh, frosting. So that's the go-to, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think whatever... They have so many varieties, different types of slices of cake, and they have cookies and, and muffins and things like that. Um, but whatever you get there, I think, is going to be a good bite. I mean, if you have the chance to visit the original location out in Inglewood, which is on mm-hmm. Prairie, just uh, actually pretty much across from SoFi stadium. It's, um, it's, it's a good, it's a good spot. I mean, you get lines out the door some days over there on weekends and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, it is, uh, it is one of LA's more, yeah, heralded, I think, uh, uh, places for a good, for good dessert like that. So, um, but they were out there in Del Amo mall. So, uh, had the chance to, to try them out there. Um, and then, Actually, not too far from um, from the Del Amo Mall uh, is this uh, small spot called Standing Room or the Standing Room. And actually, they're based, uh, I think they're originally based out in Redondo. So that's where the OG spot is. And I think that's where a lot of people would might know them from. They're tucked away in a, um, in a liquor store out there. But in Torrance, they got their own storefront. It's a smaller shop, I think. Uh, so they offer burgers um, and various sandwiches and things like that. Uh, the menu at uh, this Torrance location is a little pared down, so uh, there's not as much. But I believe what I'm looking at here is this burger called the Cash Burger, um, nice. which is which has things like bacon, some shishito peppers, yeah. Some you can see the the on, the fried onion the ring on there. Onion ring. Yeah. yeah some and Very some important. uh hoisin barbecue sauce on there as well so yeah it's um, interesting there's um it's like these american you know these american burgers american ingredients with some asian influences as well if you take a look at the menu you'll see some something sprinkled there too how is that hoisin uh hoisin barbecue because you know i love hoisin sauce not like mm-hmm. tomo but i do love hoisin and i love barbecue sauce well you're gonna like this one it's it uh like, you know it's it's got a more barbecue saucy or more hoisin-y you know, I think it, it makes uh, a good balance. You know, there is there is some sweetness that you get, you mm-hmm. know, of course, from a from barbecue sauce. But, um, you know, a hoisin to an extent can also be can have some yeah. sweetness, too. So yeah. um, I think you I think you definitely um, you get that hoisin flavor, but with the smokiness of a barbecue sauce. So nice. um, okay, okay. so I and it's not too much. It's not doused in there. Although I'm sure you wouldn't mind, but it's and not. You uh, get it on the side to drink. I think you can. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but you can see these are burgers that are a little thicker, a little thicker patty. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, all the ingredients together, uh, whatever, whichever you get, it's going to be a, a good bite there. So, uh, something to enjoy. That's, uh, the standing room. So again, if, uh, you're in Torrance, you're out there, um, you can visit there. But again, if you have the chance to go to uh, Redondo and visit the OG spot, that, uh, that would probably be the move there. Um, all right. These next several spots are in, uh, in the small town of Gardena. So Gardena is just one of those places. Again, it's kind of suburban. It's, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a quiet town, you know, it's not, not terrible, not as exciting as what people might consider other places in LA, but there's a lot going on as far as food, especially, um, you know, in Asian cuisine and, and other things we'll cover as well. But, uh, one of the, First things um, is uh, if you want a reasonably reasonably priced omakase, you know, uh, sushi and, and that kind of thing, you can visit Kanpachi Sushi uh, out there. And um, not much to say except that it's low cost and it's pretty reasonable. Okay. Um, Define reasonable. Like 50 bucks. Oh, yeah. That's really low cost. Okay, good. For an omakase. Okay. Yeah, for an omakase. So uh, it's a small spot too, you know, and I think you can tell that there are, you know, people who visit there regularly, people who are very friendly with the staff and vice versa. Um, so, you know, they're not hurting for anything, but if you uh, have a chance to visit them, then that's that might be the way to go. Um, one other, you know, as much as I appreciate sushi, one, one particular type of sushi I've been wanting to kind of get a little more into was a chirashi. Uh, which is like the, uh, you know, like the bowls, like we, like we'll show here, oh. you know, mm -hmm. the bowls of, you know, of sushi, you know, on a bed of rice, you know, um, we have some, uh, fish roe as well. And, and, um, and some of the other, you know, uh, additions on there, but, uh, one place to possibly visit would be Toshi Sushi, um, out there. Again, we're still in Gardena. There are a handful of the spots I've wanted to try and hopefully will, uh, soon, but, this was just one of those places at that time that happened to just be open and available for me to go. You know, a lot of these local, um, you know, spots, not just here, but in general, you know, when they're really local, sometimes it, it can be hard to figure out when some of these guys are open, <laughs> mm. you know, and it's like, you have to know, you have to be in the know. Um, if that's, if that's the case, you know what I mean? It, it can be kind of elusive, yeah. you know, but kind of adds you to the, to the excitement. It's like pop-ups were open till they run on stock, I assume. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So one other kind of old school spot to mention here, still on the, um, the kick of sushi is a spot called sake sushi. That's S A K A E. And this is, you know, kind of real old school. They, um, you know, it's cash only and it's like in this, hmm. yeah, kind of old building is all part of it's part of a complex you know there are other shops there but again it's uh uh it's kind of in this kind of hidden hidden spot um but this is um this is kind of a an idea of like what you could get they have a you could take a look at their menu um when you look them up uh they have you know you can get something like this is like a mixed uh box um there's um what do i have here there's like, old, it's like old school. You have some Inari, you have some Tamago, uh, Saba. Yeah. I'm just curious about the, the Tamago. Why does it look like a tire, a tank tread? Hey, why don't you ask them? I mean, that's, uh, it tastes nothing rubbery or anything like that, but, um, it's Good. definitely Tamago. Tomogo. Nice. Okay. Um, Tomo, yeah. but, and then what's interesting too, is that the the forefront here, you have a couple of California rolls. Those are actually, mm -hmm. you add those in addition to, you know, oh, you to, added the, that. to the box there. Yeah. So they don't come like when you ask for a mixed box, you know, it'll come with pretty much everything except the California rolls. Um, but then you can add them after the fact. Why would you add it? Because they're good. Actually, the, the avocado is like, you know, in this is like really creamy and, um, you know, it, it, it's actually worth uh, getting um, in this case. It's not like this cheap kind of small piece, whatever. So um, it's, um, it's quite, it, yeah, it's it good. Look big. Yeah. They're quite sizable it's, and it's comparable to the size of the Nari, which is usually yeah. pretty long. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, I think it's worth getting. Um, I think this box ran about, let's say 14, 15 bucks. Oh yeah. So, that's, really, that's a good deal. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, it's very reasonable. So, 
Um, now, uh, moving away a little bit from, yeah, sushi or things like that. In Gardena, you can find a handful of other types of restaurants, uh, two of which actually has to do with uh, some sort of fried chicken kind of deal. So this first spot is called Belly Sliders and Wings, and uh, they uh, serve wings and fries. Okay. And um, I don't know. I think they're, they were operating as a food truck elsewhere, and then they oh, okay. found a, you know, a spot in Gardena now. And um, it, it's, it is kind of in a more busy uh, part of town, and yeah, it just, it just um, kind of has yeah. more. Yeah. But, um, but if you can find yourself there and you order their wings, uh, whatever they are, whether it's lemon pepper, I don't know, soy garlic, whatever it is, um, they're worth getting. They're very good. Um, they're, they're larger than average and they're very flavorful and they got some great, um, create some great fries to pair with that. And, uh, I think the only thing though, is that it does take some time for, uh, you know, to put the food together, I think, to get the order. Oh, really? I mean, if you're just kind of walking in, I think you can call in, maybe pick up or something, but it takes a little while. But, um, you know, if you're there for that and you can get it, then it's worth uh, worth a visit. I think it's quite good. Um, one other spot is in the way of uh, fried chicken is this place called Honey Dress Fried Chicken. And um, I think people, you like this if it's, if you, it's just a super crispy, like shatteringly yeah. crispy crust. And it's got like this, you know, kind of sweet sauce that it's coated with. Um, they have these combo plates where you have the chicken and then you also have like these tenders as well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on top of a bed of fries. Uh, and it's pretty reasonable. And, you know, you bite into it, the, the chicken itself, the meat is just super hot, super moist. Um, it's just really good. Uh, and you can see yeah, like looks... you can even see the pattern of like the fry you know it's like yeah. this the yeah. skin is like super craggly you know um so awesome. it's yeah it's it's quite a good quite a good bite so can't go wrong there now one other spot in gardena was kind of an interesting experience um it this place is called gardena snack and go and um for now yeah for now they are in a uh, a discount mall I don't, I don't uh -huh. know if that makes okay. sense. So, uh, again, like I said, as you head more, um, I don't remember what direction I said, but as you head more towards the direction, like where the borders, the 110, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it is a little more industrial, a little more, yeah, maybe hood if you can yeah. describe it that way. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we're talking about like this, Ooh. um, this discount mall. So it's like a place, like a building where like people, you know, you have like all these different stalls. That people just sell in stuff, clothes, okay. random things. I don't know. Um, goods. Uh, <laughs> Is it like that swap meet that they closed down off uh, Santa Monica? Uh, kind of. Maybe Similar. but smaller, you know. Okay. Um, and, uh, but I had gone at a time where like everyone was closed already, you know. Oh, well, um, but this, you know, but this guy was still open. There's just one guy that's running the place. And, uh, you know, it's I think it's one of the few only food places that are in there. But, you know, what did mm -hmm. I get there? I got a burger, some fries, and some wings. And, you know, it was, I'll just say it was better than um, I think maybe perceived or expected. So, oh. um, you know, it's, it's. You know, nothing, uh, I wouldn't say uh, necessarily outstanding or like best I've had, but I think it was definitely very good. You know, it's a thicker, uh, thicker patty uh, uh, of a good burger. The, the, the wings I got, I think these were like lemon pepper wings and the fries were seasoned as well. They're like thicker cut fries. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned. Um, it did take a little while. Again, he's like the only guy there. I think he was working on a couple of the orders, but you know, um, it's just a real hidden spot. Uh, that's just interesting to try. Um, but, uh, I think he, the guy mentioned there that he'll be moving to another like location. So, uh, like um, an actual rest. I, I don't remember the details. Uh, I think he'll be sharing that space wherever he goes with, you know, mm -hmm. some other business that's there. So, but the guy was pretty nice, pretty friendly. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just a spot again that maybe not everyone would be willing to venture into or whatever. So, um, but if you can find yourself there go for it, you know, it's, um, just, just follow the socials. I think that's always the best, the best thing. You know, all the places we mentioned will, will, you know, provide some form of information for them. So, um, so now we are coming down to, uh, Carson 
and uh, Carson again, you know, just not uh, not as always the exciting place that people might, um, mm-hmm. you know, may not perceive it to be. But again, there's quite a few handful of places there that's worth uh, visiting and going to. Um, one of which is a bakery that's relatively new uh, called a Sweet Valentine. And um, yeah, it's just um, just a, a good bakery. They make some great baked goods. Um, the cookies we have, it's uh, this toffee kind of uh, kind of more uh, pronounced uh, flavor of cookie. You have some red velvet uh, slices there and just a nice warm cinnamon bun, you know. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on cinnamon buns, but I think they're pretty great. Yeah. Cinnamon buns are amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, usually it's good to go. I mean, they're open, uh, for a good while. I mean, like their hours are pretty, pretty good. Um, so if you can catch them, they got big goods all day, but I'm pretty sure if you go in the morning, you'll probably get the, you know, a nice batch, a good warm batch of baked goods. So, um, yeah, sweet, sweet Valentine. Now, um, while you're there, you could also uh, venture not too far from there to a small ice cream spot called uh, Ken's Ice Cream. And, you know, there's not much to say, uh, I wanted to say, but it's just a, you know, good local spot if you just wanted a, a good fix of ice cream. I mean, down the street from there, you could go to like uh, Baskin Robbins or something and get something there too. But if you want to support a local spot, um, you know, Ken, Ken's ice cream is the spot. So, um, I think they, a number of their places I could see from the, uh, the containers and stuff, they, they get their, uh, they get a lot of thrifty ice cream and, uh, from oh, nice. <laughs> among others, but, um, this was a strawberry cheesecake, you know, ice cream with chunks of cheesecake in there. So I'm not going to complain about that. Um, but you could see some of the th- other fr- thrifty flavors, like, um, what was that? Was that cotton candy one? You remember that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that signature raspberry. Like, yeah, exactly. Raspberry swirl. Mm-hmm. Uh, glorious. So, um, Ken's, uh, Ken's ice cream. Again, there are a handful of other places in Carson to visit. Um, and perhaps we'll cover those, uh, for another time. Um, but now we're moving into, uh, Lawndale. So Lawndale, we have this, uh, restaurant called Corner Burger and it's another burger spot. It's, uh, it's, it, they serve burgers that are a little thicker. So, um, you know, they're not your tip, you're not you're like your smash burgers, but they have some great food out there. Um, I remember having like a classic, you know, just like a typical like burger with, you know, your lettuce, tomato and things like that, a thick, uh, patty. Um, but they, all, I remember also having a, uh, a cowboy, which is kind of like, uh, similar to a Western. So you've got your fried onion, your barbecue sauce, your bacon. And actually, you know, as far as, you know, that trying to find that fix, um, short mm-hmm. of going to Carl's Jr. I think this is, uh, this is a strong contender. Um, okay. so I really, uh, I really did enjoy that. And then the restaurant also offers, you know, breakfast plates and things like that. They have, um, various drinks like milkshakes and, um, it's a small spot, but you know, if you're, if you're looking for something out in Lawndale, if you're there for whatever reason, then, uh, this would be a place to go. I mean, Lawndale also, you know, is the home of a number of good, like Pakistani, you know, the kind of restaurants there too. But, um, Hey, this was just one spot I wanted to, uh, to mention. Um, now kind of rounding out the South Bay, uh, we are touching in LA territory, um, but now we are in the areas of Wilmington and San Pedro. And one spot is called L.A. Waterfront Pizza in Wilmington. And this is, uh, I don't really know too much about them. I mean, I had, um, I, again, I'm probably sure I saw them on socials and they were, you know, relatively nearby. So I thought I'd try them out. They have offer both Neapolitan and Detroit style pizzas. And I think that caught my attention because as you might know, John has been on this like Detroit kick, you know, yeah. any, like any square pizza is really what he's going for. But anyway, that came to mind, but, um, I don't know. They, they're relative newcomers. So, uh, I just want to say that, you know, if you can try them out, they're good. I, they were, you know, pretty good. I, I wish, uh, I think the crust could do a little more on the brown on the, uh, the being a little more crispy, I think, but, uh, flavor wise and overall is still a pretty good bite. And, um, I think they like do, you know, do a lot of catering. They do a lot of events. And so I think the time I went, it was pretty cool. There was like, a um, 
they got low riders kind of uh, lined up along the streets and uh they also had like a uh an event going on they had a band they had you know all sorts of things going on that day music playing and uh it was pretty exciting actually so i was glad to kind of stop by when i did um but yeah so what we see here is like this detroit uh style pizza is a little spicy got a little bit of cheese on there and yeah it was uh that's a place to try now um okay. now going down a little south neighboring area of uh, san pedro um there's a barbecue spot out there called whiskey flats and um i you know I'd been to, I'd visited them out there before. It, it turns out they've kind of moved locations. They're a little more north. Uh, for those who know, um, the main artery of uh, San Pedro is Gaffey. So they are on Gaffey closer to 5th and 6th Street, which is more north. Um, previously, they were uh, more south, like on the 20th Streets, you know, so that's pretty far down. Um, but um, so they have this new spot here. So, uh, you know. What did I get? I got brisket, I got ribs, you know, of course. Yeah. So nothing to, um, but it was nice. You know, the, the previous location they had was kind of cool because it was like, they took over like this old gas station. So it kind of had, you know, had the appearance, you know, the charm of like that old school kind of feel it was kind of very outdoor, um, you know, a lot of good seating outside, but you know, this spot is fine too. Uh, as long as they can still make, um, you know, good food, then, you know, that's fine. And yeah. it's, it's a relatively more trafficked area. So hopefully it gets more attention, um, you know, from there. So, um, so that is the South Bay. So, um, I think we have once again, conquered yet another area of, uh, LA food, <laughs> And um, now we're going to move on to an area called the Gateway Cities. Actually, this is only something recently that, I mean, I've been aware of that term, but I guess it makes sense now that, um, you know, that is the name of these types of cities. So Gateway Cities um, are cities that kind of sit between and lead to uh, the area, you know, to Orange County mainly. So they sit between LA and and uh, and the OC. You seem to be... Uh, I you see your thoughts that, on that. I've never, never heard of that, honestly. You never heard of that term? No. Go talk to your bosses, okay? Look, okay. Artesia, Bellflower, Lakewood, Long, uh, not Long Beach, but Lakewood. They're spa seven, okay? They are the, what is it? What What would you group them as? I mean, is this? Uh... It's, it's just east. <laughs> okay, well, we call <laughs> them east. The county, it's east. Well, it's not wrong. They are definitely yeah. more east. But, um, yeah, these are uh, what we'll call the gateway cities, gateway from between L.A. and, and O.C., you know. So let's start off in our so, T. Yes. Wait. So then does that mean the east are the gateway cities like Pomona and them from between L.A. and uh, what is it? San Bernardino County. Is that considered a gateway city as well or no? If you have knowledge on the regions of L.A. and the L.A. Gretchen me me metropolitan area, please email us at uh, hi at dumb and hungry dot com. <laughs> Uh, we can put this to rest. So <laughs> you can look it up, you know, feel free as we as we uh, dive into this. Um, Artesia, uh, although Artesia is definitely a, a place that um, you should definitely try out for a lot of Indian uh, cuisine and fare. Um, no doubt. It's like the main artery, Pioneer Boulevard. You want to go down there. The one place we're going to mention is actually a burger spot. Uh, it's called uh, called Nilly's. And um, Nilly's particular, I want to thank uh, specifically Jose and um, David of uh, Best Food LA um, for uh, hanging out and meeting up there to try some uh, some good burgers out there. So Nilly's has uh, become a very uh, f you know very local uh, favorite spot, and um, they make some great burgers. They it you know the way we've seen them prepare them, they're not necessarily fully smashed, but they are pressed on the grill. So they start off like, you know, uh, these round, um, you know, balls of meat and then they are pressed down on the grill, but not completely smashed. Um, but it still gives a good flavor, a good sear um, and prepared very similar to one. So um, but particularly uh, what you would want to try is um, one from the one that uh, has chili on there. And um, oh. yeah, so they have like regular burgers, but then they have these burgers that are, um, yeah, 
kind of ladled okay. with with chili and it's a nice meat chili too so yeah, um, it looks good so whether it's the burger or um, even the fries they have these fries that basically like the toppings of the burger but just like on the fries which, is, which is really nice yeah so it's so, better animal style fries it seems that way yeah and um, you know, again, a small spot, but you know, it can get a little busy, but nothing too crazy by the times we've uh, we visited there. So I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, but that was it in Artesia. I would definitely like to um, visit more places down there. Uh, I just so come to not Ma- conquered. Yeah, not not conquered specifically, no. But um, it does come to mind as I talk about this. Uh, David of Best Food LA. He, uh, I think he actually is uh, like doing a little feat he's doing a feature of like um i think it's restaurant week out there in artesia so i think he's featuring a lot of restaurants out there um by the time this comes out restaurant week there will be over and everyone (laughs) forgotten but uh we'll throw down some of the info there um for that as well but uh, we're going to move on to uh, the city of bellflower again this is like one of those places that i i don't think i have visited too often and not and don't know too much about but there are uh, a couple places that are definitely worth mentioning uh one of which if my chef you want a, another good spot for flour tortillas um mm-hmm. this would be your place uh and okay. if you happen to be down here in this area obviously <laughs> you know you have oh, yeah. your you have options um but we have this restaurant called Tacos La Rueda, um, and they just make some great Sonoran style tacos, flour tacos. They've got uh, all the different meats. I think on you know on one of those days I had cabeza, but they have asada, they have oh, chorizo, okay. they have you know all sorts, which uh, are all very good. And they have a small salsa bar, so you could pile on all the you know all the condiments and things as you want. Um, but then they also have a Sonoran style hot dog. And my chef, you remember from previous uh, in all times tacos past. Are hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> are all hot dogs or tacos? Either way, both ways work. Yeah, either way, they're both very delicious. However, you slice it. But um, the Sonoran style dog, we've kind of talked about. It, we've referenced it when we've uh, talked about LA's danger dogs. Those oh, are those for. are kind <laughs> of a, those are kind of akin to uh, a Sonoran style dog. Not exactly, but it leans towards that i think characteristically it is a bacon wrapped hot dog Mm -hmm. um but the bun that they serve here is a little different it's a little plushier a little it's actually a little more steamed and they have different uh there are different toppings that you put on there different salsas um you know that you would uh, finish off um for it but um but really for me personally the standout certainly would be the tacos um whether the tacos or the larger caramellos, um, again, we see mm-hmm. those um, with other of our favorites uh, for flour tortilla places. Um, these offer them too. So um, that's tacos um, uh, La Rueda. Now, uh, also in uh, Bellflower, there, this is kind of a two for one because there are uh, kind of two places to mention here. Um, one is uh, called Birote. Um, and they are housed in a, a restaurant called Orchateria. Um, nice, I like it already. Yeah. So Birote is actually um, a a new concept from um, the chef that owns uh, Machin. If uh, you recall, uh, Machin oh, that yeah. known for um, pretty very good uh, breakfast tacos, breakfast burritos. They have a nice yeah. brunch concept uh, all there in like the East LA area. Um, and they also pop up uh, at Smorgasburg. Quick yeah. correction. I meant, uh, I really meant specifically Boyle Heights. But um, yeah, but they have this, uh, he has this sandwich. So it's a sandwich shop. Pirote is uh, the type of bread typically, or, you know, used for, um, you know, in a sandwich. And um, they have, he has various types of sandwiches. So um Whatever sandwich you're gonna get, I think uh, you will not go wrong. I um, I'm trying to recall which sandwich this was. I think it was a um, definitely pork. I remember that. Uh, do I want to say chicharron? Maybe, um, but uh, but you can see it's kind of balanced. You got the nice meat, but then it's balanced with all the veg on there, um, and there's like, like a nice elote kind of side salad. Um, so it's like elote, but a little more fresh. 
uh, just a little more, uh, just a little extra in there on top of what a typical Olote is. Um, but you can see, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of good, uh, ingredients on there on top of this kind of hearty, um, kind of bread, the birote. Um, so the space itself is actually pretty huge. You know, uh, I don't know what was there before that. If they did something, I think that restaurant, the, uh, Orchateria, I think they have their own kitchen. Uh, they probably, I think they prepare their own food too, but, um, you know, you can get horchata in many different, uh, in different forms of beverages, whether in, you know, coffees or lattes or things like that, or just, uh, straight up horchata. Uh, even they have a, a selection of uh, baked goods, you know, uh, conchas and, and things like that, with or without, you know, uh, the use of, uh, um, you know, horchata flavor or whatever. But, you know, this is, uh, this is I think, a pretty exciting, you know, addition um, spot. Uh, so if you happen, you know, if you're willing to come down here, this would be a, a great spot to visit. Um so again, it's uh, this, the spot I'm talking is Birote, the sandwich shop, and and then mm -hmm. they are in um, the restaurant, this place called Orchateria, okay, down in uh, Bellflower. Now we're gonna move it on to um, to the city of Compton, and uh, Compton. There's actually a couple places to mention here. One of which uh, I recall mentioning before, and. Uh, oh we throw it back to, uh, to barbecue. So in this case, Compton, we've got this, uh, this place called kitchen corner and, um, it's not, uh, it's, it, I'd say it's a pop-up, you know, they got this truck or trailer that they set up, um, weekly and, um, but they make some, some really good barbecue. So, um, you know, we have here, I'm showing off a beef rib, but you know, I've tried their brisket, their ribs, um, they're all pretty fantastic and what's really nice and what I can appreciate, you know, Texas barbecue. I mean, you, we've eat, we've shared many plates together, my chow, many a meal, mm -hmm. um, Texas barbecue, barbecue ain't cheap. You know, it can get pretty pricey. Um, whether because of course the, you know, just the preparation, it's, it's very involved, it takes a long time to cook, but, um, just, and just ingredient pricing out here in the sunshine state can be, uh, pretty costly as well. But, um, what I appreciate is that they keep their prices, you know, pretty reasonable. And oh. if you, again, you follow their socials. I think what's nice is that you follow their socials. You'll, you'll keep an eye on, you know, they might run some specials where, you know, um, a two meat, a two meat plate might run you maybe 20 bucks, you know, and that includes some sides and stuff. So, okay. you know, wow. it's, um, uh, you're doing a good thing for, uh, for the community out there. Um, but when you can, you know, support them and, uh, that's uh, kitchen corner out there. Um, also in Compton, the other place to mention is, um, the iconic, uh, Tam's burgers. So, you know, um, as far as kind of roadside burger stand type, uh, burgers go, you know, your classic, just like griddle, you know, uh, bun on the, you know on the grill and then with like shredded lettuce and you know raw onion and things like that you know tams would be one of those places to go if you recall i don't know i don't watch sports but you know i did watch the i remember watching the halftime show um from okay. when was that 2020 or something when they had it um uh, when they held it here at uh sofi oh, and okay. um you know snoop was there and uh and all that and they featured you know in the scenery you could see tams out there oh, really? so um again nothing well what do you get you get a burger i mean it's just the burger and fries you know nothing nothing really beyond that um but you just want a good just classic burger tams is the way to go it's a it's a, a local chain so you got locations that you can find not just in compton but you know elsewhere and um yeah, I mean, honestly, as far as the burger scene in L.A., I mean, it's really built on places like this um, that make quality, just classic stuff. Um, yeah. Simple, but, you know, it gets the job done. So um, Tam's is uh, is the way to go. Um, we are moving right along here, still in this gateway area that my child disagrees with, but um, we're looking into the city of Lakewood. Again, Lakewood, you know, Again, once again, Lakewood, I never uh, really 
uh, ventured there. My child, you probably know mm. at least one place out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important this round one <laughs> it is very important but unfortunately not it doesn't quite deliver to uh to your expectations but you no, know it the, but you know it exists out there yeah um it's still it's still nice to have you know closer than the other one but mm -hmm. better than the burbank one yeah that's right i mean so one thing i wanted to to kind of uh, highlight here about lakewood well one of my one of the uh social uh social media accounts that i i do follow um, is this uh, guy called Evan and he runs this channel called LA in a minute where he gives off a lot of great information about LA and you know greater LA just a lot of facts and historical kind of um, you know f uh, figures and things um, things about LA how things came to be um, and he does a pretty good video on you know how Lakewood is really um, Kind of the american city just like kind of uh, how it's become like this foundational kind of example of like how the rest of the nation you know of america really came to build their cities to become the model you know of that really of, of how we find a lot of neighborhoods of modern america today um you know in that kind of suburban you know kind of all-american mm -hmm. context so um lakewood was the pioneer in kind of um making that mm -hmm. happen so uh, otherwise, and that's why there's round one because, <laughs> um, exactly. So in Lakewood, actually, so there was a um, I had visited there because there was a I forget I call it a farmers market, but not exactly that. It's just more of a um, yeah, kind of an open air kind of um, food event. Uh, it's I think it was it's sponsored by the Lakewood YMCA. And okay. so, um, there were a few places there that, um, I wanted to kind of mention, um, one of which is, uh, this place called Elaine's bread pudding. And as the name suggests, they make some great bread pudding. So they make like these small kind of round serving, like personal serving size of bread pudding, um, the different flavors, different, yeah, different types of varieties there. Um, and yeah, I'm again, a lot of these places from this set, I, I don't know where they're based out of. Like, I don't know if they have a permanent location. I think they just pop up somewhere or they do catering or events and stuff. So again, it's important to follow the socials to, uh, see where they are. So, um, yeah, but, uh, Elaine's bread pudding was one of them. Another place is, um, called the cookie jar. And so they make like, nice like over a hundred different types of flavors of cookies they're um and they're quite sizable um let's see if i have something here i do so they they have like so many flavors uh one that stood out was the uh the peach cobbler cookie which is as the name kind of it's a peach cobbler in the form of a cookie i mean you get like the bits of like peach in there and whatever it's like it's um they had like a strawberry shortcake type cookie as well they have various chocolate ones i mean it's they they got a lot they got a lot um so you have no uh shortage of option or variety there so um and then a couple what was there there was like this tamale place it was called um eddie clyde's tamale hut the, from the different things i remember seeing they are filled with like these savory fillings that are more uh like soul food flavors um or yeah just more typical like that so like um i think the one i had was like this you know tamale with like you know pulled pork in there for example oh what? you know so um that that was a pretty interesting take um so i don't know where they're you know where they set up where they're at again you follow the socials to see uh where they'll be at next but that was uh that was a pretty good pretty interesting uh take from what i saw and then um one other place was called Sweets by Hanin. I think they're out in the OC. And I just remember having this like uh, a pistachio tres leches cake. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, so pistachio and uh, a little bit of rose water in there, a little flavor that way. But um, yeah, that was, uh, those were just a handful of places. They're all, they were all at that. Um, I don't know what you call it. We'll just call it a market thing sure i don't know sure 
All right. Now, um, now we're coming down to, uh, to the LBC, to Long Beach. So there's, a, there's quite a handful of places that we're getting through here, but don't worry, we'll get through them. Um, one of the first kind of uh, follows the theme of like a good classic, you know, burger. So we talk about Tams, you know, that kind of thing. So um, another great example of getting just a good, you know, burger uh, and that kind of kind of thing is this uh, It's a restaurant called Louis Burgers. And there are various locations. Um, I think I'm aware of four. And this is number three of four. So, um, you know, it's like a time capsule, you know, in time you have like these, you know, these the styles of the benches, the colors. It's like it's mm -hmm. uh, captured like in in the the 90s or something or you know late 80s um what what is that what uh, your burger looks like a like a strip steak honestly in this case it is um oh, so while they have some fantastic burgers great. this is a steak sandwich my show oh my god i want you know i think we talked about this from previous times like you know, I had a kick for the sirloin steak sandwich from Carl's Jr. way back in the day. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. And um, you've mentioned that before. And you know, I've been trying a handful of them, and uh, you know, obviously, you're not going to compete with like fast food prices, right? But yeah. um, as far as getting that flavor of like this, you know, thin strip of steak, you know, on this, you know, sandwich roll, uh, with just basic veg, you know, let shredded lettuce, tomato, and whatnot. Um, this hits the spot. This is a good, this is a good steak sandwich. Um, and there are other places like this that offer, you know, this type of food, this type. So, um, you know, I want to make sure I try them as well, but so far, like this is definitely a good example of that. Um, but you can't forget, uh, okay. as well to pair that with a good order of, um, pastrami, pastrami fries. fries. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah, of course how could you forget of course there's no uh there's no other better pairing really I mean, they're kind of mandatory to be honest so actually so these are chili cheese fries topped with pastrami, yeah, pastrami. Yeah. Yeah. of course so i guess it's kind of it. it's not specifically but it's a la like doi fries you know mm -hmm. so uh very loaded um and so they're those are quite good so uh both actually both so if you get the chili cheese fries on their own those are great um, again, a good burger, and in this case, a steak sandwich. So um, can't uh, can't really complain there. But that's Louis Burgers, uh, location number three. But let's see which one is closest near you. Yeah. Um, now a couple other places here. We have Sal's Gumbo Shack. This is more in I'd say like North Long Beach. Um, so they make some great soul food. I've just been kind of looking for local uh, spa uh, places um, for soul food and uh, that kind of thing. So in this case, we got this smothered chicken. Uh, so smothered, basically, it's fried chicken and just like covered in like gravy or some sauce. Uh, we have my chef. You can see we have some fried okra here, some mac and cheese, and uh, cornbread. I think um, I had also ordered some gumbo there too, um, which I enjoyed. But uh, the entire, just the entire menu here, um, it's really something. What's going on? Why are you laughing? It's just because the place is called Sal's Gumbo Shack, and you don't have a picture of the gumbo. Moving on. Um, <laughs> if you're in the mood for wings, uh, uh, there are a couple of places here. A little out of order, but one such place is called SoCal Wings. Um mm -hmm. This is uh, just, just a very local spot. I mean, there are a few locations. Uh, I mean, just very few and very local spot. But um, they have some uh, wings of different flavor. But this is like those kinds of places that you see this intersection of like, you know, you have the wings, but then you have like Chinese food as well, like some fried rice or like okay. chow mein or things like that. And then they also offer like things like catfish you know, I think they also fried. make a gumbo too. Yeah, fried catfish. Oh, nice. You know, so you see like all these places like come together. Um, but uh, the wings, at least, uh, they they are stand out. They're quite good. Very flavorful. I forget. They have like this thing called just the house special or whatever as far as the flavor goes. Um, and I enjoy those a lot. Um, I think I got like this garlic pepper thing too, uh, which was also good. So, but yeah, it's... it's um, Again, it's not like uh, a fancy place or anything. It's just a local place that's just quite good. Um, 
we will see here. We'll we'll jump to another um, wing spot, which is not. Wait, what's that place called? I was I almost confused it with wing stop, but it's not. I'm sorry. Um, no, this this is another um, wing wing uh, restaurant called Schlapp Muan, and we've talked about them mm -hmm. before. Um, just kind of a last minute gaff. I don't have a pick for them, even though I know I did. I had one in there. Um, but if you need your fix for wings, just nice, good quality wing with a nice touch of actually Cambodian flavors, then this is your place to go. So not only is the, you know, the, the wings prepared really well, nicely and fried, you also have, um, different Cambodian flavors. So if you, I feel like this is a great like gateway. If you want to get introduced to like the flavor and the palate of, you know, like, uh, these types of, you know, flavors, this would be a great way to go. So they got both dry rubs, you know, got wet sauces and things like that. There is this thing called, I think like an elephant, I think it was called the elephant flavor or something, which is mm -hmm. like doused in like this peanut sauce. So oh, you have okay. wings, yeah. So, um, definitely very, uh, flavorful that way. And then they, um, they also offer things like fried rice and, uh, noodles and, uh, like, um, Boba, you know, like Thai tea, oh, okay. that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, so Shlap Muan, you know, I think they have that original, they have their, like, I would say their main location in, uh, this restaurant in North Long Beach, but, um, they are all over the place and, you know, um, you'll find them at Smorgasburg, you'll find them in downtown Long Beach. They've, I think they actually recently opened a place in, uh, in Pasadena, a place you can order or pick up stuff there. So, um, yeah, if you, if you want just good wings um i mean this is a great option no doubt so um yeah so our next spot we're talking about here uh if you want something oh, if you want ice cream and you go to long beach creamery right so this mm. is uh again another local spot in a couple locations um but what am i getting there it's gonna be usually the burnt caramel or uh the black ring coffee you know so okay. um yeah, nothing really complicated here. It's just uh, a good local spot with good ice cream. So um, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong there. Um, now into a little bit of Hawaiian flair. Uh, if you want some Hawaiian comfort food, you can visit um, this place called Shoots. And that's Shoots with a Z. And um, I think they're originally based off in the OC, um, but they have a location out in North Long Beach. And so they've got um, they've got like this crispy... I think it's like crispy, crispy kimchi, butter, fried chicken. I think that's, the, I'm throwing in a lot okay. of things here, but yeah. uh, a lot of those flavors, yes, I can, you know, can really come through, but they offer them as a plate, like we see here in a bed of rice. It's a mac salad, or they have this kind of in a, a sandwich variety. So um, either way, um, you can get this fix of um, uh, this type of uh, food um, over there. And they also offer this like spam masubi, um, which are also quite good as well. So there's a combo where you get like the plate or the sandwich, and then you can also pair that with some spam masubi as well. So um, yeah, those are those are good. Um, now we continue on. Uh, we're still here in Long Beach, and one place is a, a place we've talked about before, and that's uh, Hamburgers Nice. And mm -hmm. Hamburgers Nice, they are set up in uh this they they set up weekly at this um coffee shop called um good time and um you know in the mornings so they like on the days in where they serve in the mornings they're doing like breakfast burgers and things like that and then like they also have a dinner thing that they do uh where they sometimes change it up so in this case uh this is actually what we're seeing like a chili burger done a la uh wiener schnitzel i want to say mm -hmm. um so you have this like chili cheese on there on the burger it's a smash burger so it's got they got that style but you can also see they're using like a seeded bun um and then also behind that there's like a partially eaten uh corn <laughs> dog yeah that's appetizing looking at it like that just to um you know preserve the memory there of that yeah but as far as smash burgers go, I, I do look forward to uh, the scene, you know, expanding for smash burgers, um, at least in that area. 
And one such contender uh, addition would be uh, the window. And uh, I don't remember if we've been together, but, um, you know, the window, they're originally out in Venice, um, but you'll find them in Silver Lake and they now have one out in uh, like Long Beach in the Belmont Shores neighborhood. So um, what are you getting here? You're just getting, you're getting a, you know, a smash burger. And what's nice about the window is that, you know, they still price their uh, food very reasonably. You can get a single um, smash for like under, I think it was under four bucks or something, which is crazy. Um, but it's just nice to know that there's more, there's more smash in, uh, in the LBC, right? It's very important. Never enough. Exactly. Keep smashing. <laughs> so, um, now we take a turn. Uh, we have some Mexican cuisine from a spot called Lola's and, um, they've got, it's a local chain. So they got a few locations and what I've gotten here is, uh, a, a nice comforting pozole plate, uh, a uh, nice soup, and then uh, a, there was like an asada plate as well. But uh, the basole was, was very good. Um, again, a good neighborhood spot. I think this particular one is in the Bixby Knowles neighborhood. But again, just look up where, where else they're at. Um, but can't go wrong there. Um, if you need some, you didn't, you know, surprisingly enough, you know, I don't uh, come across a lot of ta- taco places. I haven't I haven't talked a lot about taco places out in the LBC, but um, one such, I guess, familiar uh, place you could go to would be Angel's Tijuana Tacos. And um, they're known for the Al Pastor, although all mm-hmm. their carnies are good, carne asada and, what, and whatnot, but whether it's in a burrito or a taco, um, you can try them out there. And uh, they're out more in the west side of Long Beach, but um, those uh, those would be a good um, a good taco uh, to uh, to venture to. Uh, don't worry, Macho. We are kind of rounding it out here, but we'll get there. Um, if you need some donuts, uh, one one place to try uh, there. I mean, so here's the thing: like you know, Cambodians really built the donut empire. Okay, it's well documented. And, it? uh, it is, it is. All right. I would need a deep dive on this for one of these episodes. Uh, maybe we should, but I'll throw down, um, at least maybe a link to the documentary of, uh, really the man who really started it all and we can thank, but, uh, for now, um, although we, we do mention that there is a recent edition, um, called, uh, Moonbridge Donuts there. I forget which neighborhood, but they're a little more farther East. Um, but they're, they're more like gourmet donuts. So more higher quality, like those more, yeah, gourmet, uh, a little higher price yeah. or whatever. So, um, but we have some cake donuts, we have some yeast donuts. So a couple of the flavors, one of them was like this raspberry donut, which was pretty good. And there was one, um, with like this Viet Vietnamese coffee flavor as well. A little bit of oh, cake. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. That's- and then a, a plain donut. But yeah, these were like pretty substantial and um, they, it was just, yeah, it was uh, just not very heavy and just, it was just, uh, just a nicer kind of overall like bite, I'd say for a donut. So. All right. Yeast or cake? Well, both. Well, the raspberry donut, the, the raspberry donut was a cake donut. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But if you but had to pick one. My personal, yeah, I, I'm usually yeah. like, I would get like a cake donut. Yeah. Uh, what of my people? Yeah. All right. I like it. So usually like the cake donuts are like the, the old fashions, right? Those, those yeah. sorts of things. Those Love are cake donuts. Those are quite good. So, um, but to, uh, if you want to pair that with some barbecue, uh, you can visit, uh, <laughs> you can visit this place, um, this barbecue spot called Wrigley barbecue. Um, and I don't know, like I, I had, um, came across them and I wanted to try them, but they make a really good plate of barbecue. We, here we have some, uh, we have some, there were some ribs, uh, sausage, and I think there was brisket as well. Um, what is that? And then we have some the yams. Left. Oh, we have some yams, oh, yams, yams okay, and, nice. uh, and some mac and cheese. So I think they're reasonably priced and they were very flavorful. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this place and I would like to try them again. Um, this is more Southern style, you know, it's not Texas or anything like that, but, um, uh, 
this this is a good uh, this would be a great spot to um to visit again so and then um lastly for long beach um we've come kind of rounding it out here we uh this is a spot we have talked about before or at least i've shown you before is this place called dave's and um it's a small kind of burger shack um in the kind of bixby knolls area and they're kind of known for just making a good again like classic roadside burger burger stand but they have this burger called the cubby mm. and um so as you can see here you have uh you have your burger with your veg on there but then you also have um some hot dogs sliced on there too <laughs> yeah so um there are a couple of examples actually in la that um offer this kind of dish uh, but um, at least here in Long Beach, uh, you'll find this uh, this iteration here at uh, at Dave's Burgers. So um, now, um, as far as LA, my child, we've actually we have conquered LA. Um, the greater Los a Angeles whole, area. That's right. Um, but we uh, we're do. Sure LA, huh? The what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so we're going to venture off a little outside, um, of LA, uh, not too far and not too deep, what? but, um, we're just going to visit a couple spots in the OC and, um, you know, one of which we've, uh, already talked about previously, uh, the smoke mm -hmm. queen, uh, just a new, um, Texas style barbecue spot out in garden Grove. So, yeah, not um, too far out, not that far. So we got brisket and, uh, ribs and, uh, some Asian flavors, uh, like siu yuk and char siu and a lot of Asian, uh, flavored sides as well. Um, so if you would like to try out there go to, uh, visit the smoke queen. Um, and then one other spot, it's actually for some sweets. Um, this was actually, I watched a video, um, on my YouTube feed. Uh, highlighting this small uh, French pastry shop in Anaheim. I, I think it's called Le Mirage. And um, mm -hmm. in addition to a lot of French style pastries, there's also um, a lot of Middle Eastern kind of influence as well. One particular dessert that, uh, that I wanted to talk about here was this uh, ice cream called Bouza. And um, I'd never heard of it. I had no idea about it. But um, Booza is this, um, it, it's like this stretchy, chewy ice cream. Like it, it doesn't immediately like melt in your mouth like a typical ice cream. But um, there's like a little bit of like resin in there, a little bit. Yeah, these kind of ingredients that, oh, really? that make it like this chewier texture. Um, and you can see flavor wise, you have um, a pistachio some rose water again a lot of these um kind of middle eastern uh kind of influences here but um abuza and i'll we'll share the the video down there too um where that's from but yeah it's it's stretchy it's gummy you know but it's got great flavor and it's it's an interesting texture and i really enjoyed it um it's just that you go to uh, there in anaheim and as you know my child we're not going to go to anaheim anytime soon at least not anymore not anymore so yeah what's the point but um, we'll have to I have to find an excuse to venture out there. But yeah, that's um, that was a good one. Um, now we've officially conquered uh, the OC. Um, oh, well, now it's all okay. <laughs> we're really making strides here. But um, but yeah, back to LA. We've we've uh, really uh, covered a lot of ground. Um, uh, we've covered many different regions, many different types of food i think it just many different places a lot of calories consumed i tell you that much um as expected yeah actually but um i don't know my child from all the rambling here if there's anything really that stood out to you or anything that you know maybe piqued your interest um yeah i mean there's just a all lot right. going on here so that steak sandwich from louis burgers yeah curious i'm very curious okay but the, the place I'm most interested about, honestly, that you talked about today, honey dressed chicken. Mm. Cause that, I don't know if it's the picture that looked yeah. good mm -hmm. or if, if it's actually that good, but it looked, that was a great picture to sell that, that food. 
personally, I think it's uh, I think it's a great spot. You know, it's a relatively new spot as well, and I hope they stick around. Um, they're again like in kind of uh, two spots apparently. Oh, they do. Okay, where's the so the yeah. the one went is Gardena. So where's the other one? Torrance. It's okay, not, not too far. Again, South but, Bay. Yeah, two locations. You know. So yeah. um, next time we get you out here, we'll uh, we'll hook you up with some uh, honey dressed fried chicken. So it's it's good. Yeah, I really enjoyed amazing. it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of good eats to be found. Um, a lot of these places, they might be on a list. They might be you know featured. You like, a lot of these places you know, probably see on social. You know they'll probably. You know, knowing, um, you know, how the socials work and your phone works, it's like they'll probably be listening to you and then they'll just uh, spring up on your feed in no time, right? Oh, no? me specifically. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. mean <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been looking them up as you go along. So right. uh, okay. my, my feed's going to be inundated with these places or Absolutely. similar. Yeah, so like as you as you kind of referenced earlier, I mean, we've covered a lot of ground, but yeah, there are like maybe two other major areas we I mean really didn't touch. Uh, there's the Santa Clarita Va- uh, Valley, and um, nothing you're missing an- out there, and the and the Antelope Valley. So um, also nothing you're missing out there. I know. Uh, I'll I'll throw it back again about that LA in a minute guy I was talking about. He um you know he did a highlight of a feature of like um several restaurants that have been open for a very long time let's say over 100 years in la oh. county and i think there is one such restaurant that exists in the santa clarita valley um now i don't know if i would you know venture out all the way there um i mean scb hasn't been around for 100 years no way <laughs> no okay maybe not 100 no. but maybe maybe a long time i gotta fact check myself on this then but i know like there's just like an a, a spot that's been open for a very long time. Uh, it's got kind of that historical significance or whatever. Um, but okay. But uh, I'll throw that wherever that is. And then you can follow up with me. And, you know, if you've lived in the SCV for over a hundred years, please email us at hi at dumb and hungry dot com uh, and let us know what it's like out there. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, but there's plenty and far in between of um, everything we've talked about so far. So hopefully you'll find your way out there. Um, and hopefully my child, we can uh, hit up a lot of these, um, a lot of these places together. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Nice. But, um, but for now, the place in the LBC. Yeah, maybe. But for now, you know, we come to the end of another episode. So thank you. And thank you to our few and only fans for joining us. We're excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Just reach out here on Instagram. I'm at Dumb and Hungry. He's at my underscore chow, where you can just slide right in. Uh, you can also email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com, where you can leave us our feedback and your love letters. You can find the videos on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm my chef. And in your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. Actually, we're not done yet. I, um, my, my, hung, my hunger, my <laughs> literal hunger and my figurative hunger for um for power and uh and conquest uh continues i wanted to just talk about a few other places what's that yeah yeah it it grants you power yeah Uh, all right Mm -hmm. so um makes sense now a few places i wanted to talk about actually so um again in this time window we're talking about here i uh went down to san diego like around holiday time and there were um you know, this was all around holidays, so, you know, it's a little quiet, you know, not too much going on, but there's still a lot of good eats going on out there. I was able to try. Um, if you need a good smash burger uh, out there, um, you can go to The Friendly, this place called, you know, The Friendly. It's actually a pizza spot, but they make some great smash burgers as well. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, 
it's called the friendly uh and then as far as barbecue goes there are a handful of um you know barbecue places including texas style and whatnot but i think a good just kind of um comforting uh go-to personally would be phil's barbecue so um you know of course yeah so they've got some pretty massive plates that they serve whether it's pork ribs or beef ribs or whatnot um uh, while my appetite is usually voracious, um, you could get like a smaller sampler. So in this case, you know, I got like this, uh, tick, they call it a tickler plate, I guess. In this case, okay. uh, one beef rib, couple onion rings, fries, coleslaw, you know, can't go wrong with that. Um, and then if you are looking for some Asian flair, uh, one thing you can try that's a little more like modern take would be this place called Formosa. Uh, Musa as in a cow, Musa. Um, <laughs> this is Taiwanese, actually. Taiwanese flair with uh, a good, a great beef roll, um, some popcorn chicken, and a great noodle soup. Um, everything on there was quite good. Um and it was on the same plaza as like this other Chinese restaurant that's well known, but uh, was just too busy for me to uh, be able to to join that time. So, but I'm glad Formosa was around to get my fix. Um, if you need a good classic taco, you can go to Tacos El Gordo for some good uh, adobada. Um, and I don't know what it was, I, although I said it was kind of quiet during holidays. I mean, going to that spot. Um, was, uh, definitely very busy, very lively over there. The lines were just, uh, just crazy. Um, you just got to look, you know, at the sign. So they have like several lines at the restaurant. If you recall, when we went They're like several lines out there and each one has like specific items that they serve. Like they'll have one will serve like carne asada. One will serve the adobada. One will do like loaded fries. One will do burritos, things like that. So just find your line and, and line up there. So you don't, you know, end up waiting in the wrong line. A lot of times they will help you, you know, get the thing that you want, even though they don't necessarily prepare it there. It just takes a little longer. And then, you know, people will look at you and judge you, whatever. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, tacos, El Gordo's, uh, it's a good go-to. Um, and then outside of San Diego, it's a small town called Julian, it's a small mountain town. Um, and then while I was out there, it was... Uh, definitely a little more lively out there, surprisingly, even though it is a smaller town. Um, but, uh, you can visit Julian beer company and, uh, they have, they offer some pretty decent, uh, barbecue out there. Um, tried some ribs, some brisket, uh, they had a burger out there, so had to get some of that. Um, and then on the way back, there's a, a local, a small bakery called mom's pies, so they make some, uh, yeah, it's a good local spot, some good pies some good baked goods. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that's a small kind of sampling there in, uh, in San Diego. And now we've conquered San Diego too. What about that? <laughs> so, uh, a lot of food for thought. So plenty to know we're safe. No, <laughs> better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. So yeah, um, San Diego is another great area to, to explore. Um, but, uh, we'll just have to find some time to do it. So, 